What's good? What's good? What's good? Your boy back. It's your boy B Neil, aka Emma Thoughts, aka Fat House and Howard. We're back in this thing. We got another reaction video for y'all. This time we're doing something a little different. I found this very interesting video or title. I haven't even watched the video yo video yet. The death of cloud rap. I remember what what, what was it? When was it? I think it popped like 2000, maybe 16, 17 ish. When I start hearing niggas names like Ugly God and 22, 23 Savage and all these different things that uh, Lil Pimp, I mean Lil Pump, I literally did the shit that Trump did. That's hilarious. Um, <clears throat> and all these rappers. And I was like, I, I literally didn't fuck with Lil Baby. I didn't fuck with uh, Moneybag. So many niggas I didn't fuck with because they was kind of right around that area of a lot of these clout rappers and i at the time i would just distance myself from rap if i didn't know you or if you didn't have like this content i really resonated with i was not even trying to discover you so i was so ready for the end of it and it, it kind of died out seamlessly seamlessly or or seem i don't know how to say that word um or today i can't get it out for whatever reason but um because it over time you're like damn when you look around they're not, they're not really around anymore so to see this video it's like hmm that was kind of on my mind um even though uh no one really was talking about it so i i, I definitely want to watch it i want to see what he has to say uh, i think it'll be an interesting video so let's get it man first of the world little pimp there he is <laughs> does everyone know who he is uh, do you know how big he is come on up here if you got popping in 2017 or 2018 and by 2021 you were washed up you were basically a one-hit one you are a disgrace y'all got hooked on drugs hooked on anything but phonics and didn't can deliver you are trash for years now hip-hop news organizations have found themselves in the unenviable position where what the what was that shit uh double xl uh Freshman cover was horrendous the last like five years, six years. Rather than finding that they receive much of their traffic from detailed reporting about the music that they love, most of their revenue was generated from charting the never ending antics of hip hop's youth as they battle for the audience's attention. In turn, giving rise to the mutation of the genre that's been labeled as clout rap. Although a concrete definition is hard to come by, so-called clout rap is defined by a few things. A, the artist's social media presence plays as much, if not more, of a role in their career as the music itself. B, they'll regularly find themselves involved in meaningless scuffles and beefs online. And C, any substance takes a back seat to constant claims that you are the top dog in the industry. In lieu of any real mission statement, the only true goal that the clout fixated rapper has is to keep stacking up enough jewelry, designer clothes, and every other status symbol they can find to make themselves undeniable. Although they predated the clout era, this concept was beta tested by early internet rappers such as Lil B before being arguably perfected by Soldier Boy. As after making his ascent in the mid 2000s, the head of SODMG, who released a track entitled Hella Clout in 2018, has made a career out of proclaiming himself to be hip hop's market leader and beefing with everyone from wrestlers to influencers along the way. All the while, throwing his hat into the ring as the biggest and most viable. He's the male Britney Renner. Idol star in the game, resulting in an era where he may make memes, but he hasn't registered on the charts in a decade. Yo, oh, Meek Mill ain't beef with Chris Brown and was finna box and with Floyd Mayweather. He would be with Drake, the biggest rapper in the world. <laughs> Drake? <laughs> Drake? <laughs> the got bitey by Pusha T? Oh. He copied my whole flow. Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar. All right, so I want to take a quick break to thank our friends at Keeps.com. For anyone that's endured a battle with thinning or receding hair, you know that it could be a real uphill battle. Boy, Even if it hasn't no affected you as of yet, as two out of three guys will experience some form Uzi Vert's clout to the popularization of clout goggles, 2017 was arguably the year where clout rap reached its peak. The subject of countless tracks and hastily penned bars that look to capitalize on the end. I don't think Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi was uh, one of those people that I put into that list where I just was not listening to. But as I got older, Lil Uzi got some good hits. And he's pretty consistent with being able to make good songs. If you ask me. Idea, the emergence of clout as a just cultural obsession much. meant that Anymore. everywhere you looked, <laughs> everyone was attempting to accumulate it, either through their latest hijinks on social media, or in the case of Joyner Lucas or Florida's own Denzel Curry, rallying against it. It's Muhammad Ali when he's mouthing off, which changed boxing and made it more entertaining. It's Tupac when he was going wild on people, creating entertainment, said Nas when discussing the rise of clout in November of last year. I don't care for it when it's only that, when it's only clout, when there's no real purpose behind the record other than trying to get 
extremes. I wish artists would try not to do so much clout chasing because the people notice it and it's corny. Although there's no doubt that some artists have modeled their careers around getting one up on others who'd likely try to shrug Nasir's comments. <clears throat> and that's when, I, see, people notice it from the jump, but the problem with hip hop is it's been uh, infiltrated with a lot of uh, backpackers or um, tr uh, what, what do you call that? Hip, not hipsters, you can call them. Um, hype beast, hype beast. There's a lot of hype beast in hip hop they don't really understand a culture um they don't really care about the culture and they really just like trendy shit dumb shit and a lot of times it be young white kids let's be real <laughs> let's be real it'd be young white kids that support these type of artists and sometimes they get big enough to where other people accept them if they stay around long enough so it looks like it's legit but if you really know the truth bro that's when you start getting these industry plants and shit like this like bro you're really not for the culture you're really not like you're, you're not really here for musical content you're more here for image and brand and that'd be the truth and like i said most people that's real see like he said most people that is real see that but it's it's crazy because a lot of uh, probably like 30 or 40 percent of like sales go to like hype beast if i'm being for real like oh. hype beast probably promote they hype beast <clears throat> probably go to more concerts and festivals if i'm being honest there does appear to be a steadily mounting case that the concept has been driven into the ground to pinpoint a prime example of this, look no further than Lil Pump. Since busting out of the gate with Gucci Gang, Pump has used his platform as a means to profit from the prevailing trends of the day, eventually gaining so much notoriety as a comedic figure in hip hop that he even netted a Kanye West collaboration. From his provocations to J. Cole through his fake retirement and embracing the idea of- So that's what I was, uh, for simply, if he was able to consistently do that, eventually he would have been came known or got enough notoriety with black people. Like, you know, we, we fuck with him. He's been seen with enough black people. We fuck with him. But he literally didn't have enough music to even like keep up with that. Like if he would have just been a little bit good at music, he might've been able to stay around. But the fact that he didn't have any substance, none, none of that shit even worked. Of being a addict, there was a period where no matter if you liked him or loathed him, he was simply too big to be ignored. Then he suddenly found himself them. scrambling to replicate his attention grabbing style after his 2019 Harvard dropout project, saw his persona wear thin, and result in the record spawning no hit singles whatsoever. And as we saw earlier, he not only attempted to feud with Eminem, but tried to garner some clicks by restyling himself as a Trump supporter. To the mind of no jumpers Trash. Adam 22, this was a case of when clout chasing leaves you painted into a corner and just waiting on your downfall. It kind of feels like a lot of that might have closed the door a little bit on people's willingness to f with him. Not artists necessarily, but the fans, you know? It was already crazy enough, but the fact that he called him a little pimp just blew my f***ing into a million pieces. Um, I didn't think that was a great idea. I don't think long term it was a good career move. Although it's not nearly as dramatic a decline, the infamous Takashi 69 was another beneficiary of the clout era. Fresh from his release from jail after he turned informant and became hip hop's most wanted man, the world record breaking live stream that announced his return to the public eye may have seemed like a new high watermark, but would actually prove to be the beginning of the end. After proclaiming that he was clout on comeback single Gooba, the sales of his sophomore album Tattletales amounted to just 50,000 and the number four Damn. spot on the chart, just one third of what it was predicted that he'd shift. Just like Pump before him, curiosity dipped when his shtick proved repetitive and with nothing to back it up, he could never recapture that magic. While his situation wasn't as explosive, this sense of fraudulent hood origin stories coming back to haunt an artist was embodied by Alabama's YBN Namir. Pre I didn't, I've never heard, I mean, I've heard of YM, YMB and Namir or whatever, but I didn't know, like, he was acting hood, but a lot of fucking gangster dudes are just examples of this dude just having got caught. Propelled the fame by tracks such as Rubbing Off the Paint, the YBN leader arrived with no shortage of lyrics about doing dirt in the streets. But when it was discovered that it was the virtual neighborhoods of San Andreas that he earned his stripes on, the jokes came thick and fast. Particularly as his identity crisis continued to rage on before his eyes. I used to be on the internet a lot, so all my friends on the internet were from California. I was always around them, online, so I started to sound like them, he told The Fader in October 2017. I don't really hang around people from Alabama for real, except my cousins in them. Just one month on, he put forth a contrasting image to No Jumper. Cause I only hang with people that's like older than me. I was Film degrees at full he, he He seen what so many other rappers had done and got away with, so he tried to do it and just got caught. That's, that's, <clears throat> That's all that's the case of right there. Cool, like you feel me? I was smooth. I know a bunch of that didn't die. Life sentences in jail. But it was really smooth. Like, I ain't really had to worry about because I know my had me and like, I 
wouldn't know me because my name ho way in my city. Now in the post cloud <laughs> era, YBN Namir's 2021 album Vision Land shifted a measly 4,000 copies and was relentlessly claimed Damn. by fans. Possessing more of a shared ancestry 4, with YouTube thousand? rappers than with the icons of the past, it was only a matter of time until the appeal of relentless posturing wore off. Particularly when you consider that as of May of last year, artists were looking to use their platforms for good. After like, like, bro, all you gotta do is be a fun rapper. If you got this talent, bro, just be a fun rapper. Make good music, bro. You ain't gotta act like you this hood, dude. Even though I know that's the easy way to do it, or it feels like it's the easy way to do it, but a lot of times these rappers actually, that even as faking, they get caught up in real hood situations because they fake it, and that'd be the problem, bro. You you gotta you gotta come across that lifestyle that you faking and and and, and putting on. So, all right, it's gonna get tested eventually. And that's the problem with faking it that a lot of people don't realize. So yeah, it may be easy in the beginning, but once them consequences start coming around, you're gonna reap some negative benefits, bro. And a lot of dudes don't be ready for that. The tragic murder of George Floyd re-energized the BLM movement. Artists such as Lil Baby, The Baby, Roddy Rich, and Conway threw themselves into musical activism. For Lil Baby, this shift was so well received that protest anthem, The Bigger Picture, became his highest charting single, proving that the mindlessness of cloud chasing so isn't necessary. That, that hoe was so hard. This is what made me start fucking with Lil Baby. When I heard the, how he was able to articulate his points and inside, inside of a song that had to do with like deep points, I, it, it really impressed me and it made me listen to more music and I was like, oh, I was missing out. I was asleep because he was he was being thoughtful from both sides. He was like, it ain't all cops. You know, we know it's some fucked up cops. Uh, black people, you can act crazy and all this shit, but you got chill on. Like he was speaking on points that most people would uh, tiptoe around and I fucked with it. Really the key to success inside of a song. Like it was up, it super counted, uber talented. Uber just talented. Just impactful. With these artists emphasizing that there's still a place for sincerity in hip hop, we've reached a point where even those who are forerunners of clout rap are now analyzing what's going on and pointing out that this is a monster that we've all helped create. Having arrived in the game with an exaggerated, drill inspired persona in 2015, Slim Jesus was instantly vilified for his gimmick. So, when it was revealed that New York's Lil Tecca had falsified his bars about choppers and other criminality, Slim Jesus was quick to point out that this was nothing new. Having a gun don't make anyone gay. So rapping about guns don't make you want to be gangster. You just rapping about guns. Like I rap about and I have a whole girl. If you don't like what I'm talking about, go listen to someone else. When I came out, my first interview, I said, look, I ain't out here trying to kill nobody. I'm here to make my music. Y'all almost try to crucify my So my issue lie with y'all. See, they play with, he don't know they play with fire. He don't know he playing with fire. He's like, I ain't no one kill nobody. I don't know want to beef. I don't want to do all that. Bro, that's a part of that gangster lifestyle. It takes on the spirit. It puts you in certain situations and, and predicaments. When you take on that certain gangster energy, you get gangster results. And all of a sudden, oh man, I just wanted to make some money. All right. Y'all dumb, bro. I swear y'all hate my so much, bro. But I don't think y'all really know. He really, he really still ain't learned. Look at his mannerisms. He's still trying to. He's still trying to. Play like or, or placate, a placate like he's this hood dude. Get the fuck out of here. Me in the first place, bro. Valid as his criticisms may be, Slim's suggestion that he was unfairly treated misses out on the crucial difference in time frame between himself and the 18-year-old MC behind did it again. As while Slim was sticking his neck out there with a falsified character in 2015, Tekka has arrived at a time when that was ultimately commonplace and caters to an audience that cares more about clout than content. However, it appears that Lil Tekka caught the tail end of an era in which this works, and now, inauthenticity is once again coming under scrutiny. During a recent live stream, DJ Academics, who released his own Clout Chaser EP at the height of the wave in 2018, claimed that clout has been abolished as the audience reestablishes an appetite for realness. The people who were swag rap- Maybe we'll get Kendrick. <laughs> In gangsterism and by the way i'm gonna include smoke perp he used to rap about all type of guns he had again the real street rappers eradicated y'all your raps are not believable they don't hit the same when they, people see poo shiesty they think he's a real shooter when they see namir they think he's a gta role player y'all have a little era where you shock or you amaze people and within that time period people care a year later they don't Left to flounder after artists such as 6 9 and Lil shit. Pump had weakened the audience's capacity to suspend their belief, it appears that more elaborate stunts are giving way to an understated air street credentials. Led by figures such as Lil Durk, Pooh Shiesty, and Polo G, this new breed of street-oriented rappers have helped audiences delineate between the real and the fake and have become the new dominant wave. 
And what is the perfect summary of this tipping of the scales? Look no further than June of 2020, in which Lil Pump's former ally and noted clout rapper Smoke Perp went up against Lil Durk for the audience's listenership. Within that same first week spell, Smoke Perp's Florida Jet sold 5,000 while the deluxe edition of Lil Durk's Just Cause Y'all Waited 2 recorded a massive 40,000. In December of that year, Durk would forfeit most of the first week's sale period for follow-up record The Voice and still clocked in over 23,000. Within the following week, he'd obtain another 66,000 before he'd help elevate Pooh Shiesty to dominance with Back in Blood, with his debut album shifting 62,000 in its first week. And with that, the power officially changed hands. No longer willing to stand by and tolerate artists whose singular selling point comes from the same sort of drama that's made reality TV into a guilty pleasure, hip hop is now searching for a reconfiguration of what and who will dominate the charts. And while it's impossible to know if this pivot towards rappers with a real aura of menace to them is the answer in the long run, fans can take comfort in the fact that for the clout rappers, their bag of tricks is officially drawing blanks and is out of sync with the audience's ever evolving sensibilities. Or as J. Cole put it on the prophetic Lil Pump response of 1985, one day them kids that's listening gonna grow up and get to Oh, for the that made you blow up. Now your show's looking like cause they don't show up, which unfortunately means the money slow up. Real shit, real shit, man. I'm happy for it, man. And I think most of real hip hop is happy for it. So it just shows, man. A lot of times the market will correct itself. So be careful with playing devil's advocate or being like this um clickbait or um what do you call it antics type of person to create some type of you know lane because once the market start correcting itself it's it's not a high demand for you anymore and we're seeing the results of that and like i said unfortunately i'm sorry i like it hopefully those dudes can either adjust and adapt their talents or maybe pivot to something else um but hey man real shit is here i know what they say all that fake shit is here today going tomorrow <laughs> but thank y'all for watching y'all stay real keep liking keep subscribing man we're gonna be coming with y'all with some more peace